Ladies and gentlemen, with RDNA 2, I think it's fair to say that AMD did an amazing job. They went with a humongous monolithic die, and for the most part, I think it was very, very comparable to RTX 30, in some ways better, in some ways worse. For example, it had more VRAM, however, ray tracing performance was worse, and customers, of course, were able to make their decision. RDNA 3 hasn't been received so well, but still, for the most part, it's been a pretty decent architecture. And of course, there was the hope of RDNA 4. Well, there are some very concerning rumours that have been circulating online, and I have also been hearing them over the past few days. And to give you the TLDR, it seems that the high-end RDNA 4 parts have been totally canned, and instead we will just see low mid-range performance products, and it gets worse with the situation of the drivers, as Polaris owners as well as Vega owners could well be rather upset and we're going to get into all of this after this message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10 which isn't activated of course not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 professional as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So I want to set a bit of a scene for you guys. So typically I get a lot of rumors from various sources and just kind of online. And I've been hearing a very interesting rumor over the past couple of days. Basically speaking, people were messaging me, sources, and saying, hey, have you heard anything a bit concerning about N41 or 42? Now, initially, when one source says something like that, my first instinct was, yeah, I think that the multi-compute die thing has just been canned, and I think now it's a single compute die, and I've reported this a couple of times, and I'll give you guys what I think has actually happened in just a moment. However, then a couple of other sources started to say the same thing, and I just couldn't get anything 100% confirmed because they were saying that there was something happening, but I couldn't quite understand what until it seems Kepler L2 on Twitter stated that, yeah, it's cancelled, and I also woke up to a bunch of messages from my sources today to say pretty much the same thing. So let me give you guys the gist here. What seems to have happened, to my understanding, and I'm sure I'll probably make an update with a better overview of this over the next week or two but what seems to have happened is initially the plans for rdna4 the high end let's ignore 30 uh, sorry 43 and 44 for a moment we're referring here let's just say 41 which is the highest end here it was initially going to be a multi-compute die so how this basically worked uh the early plans that i heard anyway and i've spoke about this at length is there were three compute dies and they were essentially sitting on um on a base die on a basically an interposer however it wasn't just a dumb piece of silicon it also had some other things like the display engine and then that in turn would connect to things like the uh, mcds the infinity cache basically and that of course in turn would connect to the memory However, and I've put this video out multiple times, there seem to be some issues with the bring-up. And long story short, they cut the plans down from multiple, you know, compute dies to a single one. So it more resembled N31. So there was a large compute die. I heard at this time it was somewhere around 60 workgroup processors, although, of course, it hadn't been taped out. So anything could have happened. They could have increased or decreased the number. But at the time, I was told 60 was the target. And it would still be fairly performant. It would probably be somewhere in the neighborhood of maybe RTX 5070 to 5080. Obviously, it's very difficult to give exact performance targets because, well, we're talking about two products that haven't been released. So even if you roughly know what the performance targets are, do they hit the clock frequencies, for example? Like, what is the final clock frequency of RTX 50 going to be? I've heard it's well north of 3 gigahertz, but what does that mean? Is it 3.1, 3.2, 3.5, 7 gigahertz? You know what I mean. Anyway, long story short, this no longer seems to be the case. And N41 and 42 are totally canned. 
Instead, there is 43 and 44. Now, I was told that the performance targets for 43 were somewhere around 20 workgroup processes. However, this is old information, so this number could probably be a little bit higher now. I honestly do not know. Again, I'll try to give you guys some updates. Now, I have some understanding as to why the higher-end cards were canned, and all I can tell you guys at this stage is that there were architectural issues with the higher-end products. Um, I'd love to be more specific. Hopefully, someone else will leak it in public. Um, and I will probably be able to leak it at some point soon. I, I, I don't want to be an asshole. I don't want to say something when I was asked to not say something. So, from what I understand anyway, there were just some architectural issues. And to be honest, a specific one for this video doesn't matter too much anyway. Um, but... Basically speaking, this means that N31, which of course is the highest end tier at the moment for RDNA 3 for discrete, that will still probably be the most performant part when RDNA 4 launches. Now, the real sh sad thing about this is I've also been told that the ray tracing performance of RDNA 4 is actually significantly better. And it seems that, for example, that patent from AMD, uh, what basically seems to indicate that there's going to be dedicated BVH traversal hardware on the silicon, that does seem to actually be true, um, along with some other changes. Now, I am guessing here, however, I still don't think it's quite on par with NVIDIA's feature set. I think NVIDIA um we still have an advantage and i refer here to you know the actual feature set not you know i'm not talking about like a very high-end card versus a mid-range amd card I, i'm actually referring here to you know equivalent right like for like and feature set okay so what else i can tell you is the performance target for rdna4 was initially going to be a 50 percent improvement per watt now this has been the same as what they did with let's say rdna2 over one and these targets have been pretty consistent from AMD, but it seems that RDNA 4 is not going to meet those targets. The other thing that I want to tell you guys is that I've heard the distributing, uh, dis wow, I can't speak today, the distributed uh, compute dies or, you know, the multi GCXs or whatever you want to say, those have now shifted to RDNA 5. Um, as for the release date of RDNA 5, it's probably going to be somewhere around 18 to 24 months after RDNA 4 launches, which again, I want to stress, guys, I'm hoping my information, as well as what Kepler and other rumors are starting to circulate, is wrong, because this would suck. But I've heard this now from a couple of very good sources. Um, I can't obviously attribute what they've told me in the past, because I don't want to make it easy for people to track down what, you know, who's who. But I can tell you that generally speaking they've been very accurate and kepler also has a very good track record so if this is the case let's just roughly equalize the timelines let's say rtx 50 and um, rdna4 launch pretty much simultaneously it basically means that amd are gonna in theory be potentially in a very similar situation albeit with different product tiers to uh, in, uh, intel's battle mage now this is not necessarily bad for profitability's sake. Now, what the hell am I talking about? I hear you cry. Obviously, if they can't compete with the flag, yeah, but remember, most people don't necessarily buy the flagship. How many people actually buy, for example, RTX 4090? Yes, you guys watching this channel, you are hardcore, and you guys know a lot about tech, you, you know, you build PCs, yada, yada, yada. But do remember that the average, you know, person, A, they don't wanna spend like 800 bucks, 1200 bucks, 1500 bucks on a graphics card, but they also, they buy pre-built. And this means that volume sales, for example, the mid-range parts, are typically what, you know, has the volume. There's a reason that NVIDIA just sell so many cards like the uh, GTX 1050s back in the day, or the 1060s, or the, um, oh god, my brain has gone blank, the 1660 Super. And, you know, same thing for AMD. Like, if you look at the Steam uh, hardware sales, there's a reason that we have, like, you know, those specific cards on high volume, and then, you know, most people don't buy, let's say, a 4080 or a 4090 or the 7900 XTX or whatever. Now, of course, it is great to still have those products, but it doesn't mean that AMD are in financial doom and gloom. Now, my, from what I'm hearing, the reason that these products were essentially cancelled is because it was going to... 
again, I'm trying to be a little careful what I say, but basically it would mean that there would be even more work to get the high-end tiers working correctly, and it would probably mean that there were going to be delays potentially for other cards down the line. So basically AMD took the L on this specific generation. Um, I have a lot of thoughts to this one, but I don't want to say too much until I can get more specific information. So I'll probably make a video in a couple of days. Hopefully some other leaks will pop up. Again, I really hope this is not true. Um, but as I said, Kepler usually has really good information. Um, and the sources that have told me this, they normally are pretty good. So just, I, I don't really know what to say. Um, <laughs> On the positive side, Battle Mage is shaping up to be decent. <laughs> um, but please don't click off the video because it gets worse. So, oh God, I don't even know how to start with this one. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Now, again, this has not been confirmed by AMD, so please take with a pinch of salt. However, I have now had this again told to me by a couple of people. Um, and I, I really hope this is one of those times I take the L, because I would be very happy if this is not true. Um, however, I have been told specifically that if you are an owner of Vega and Polaris, your card essentially is not going to be supported pretty soon with future driver updates. Now, from what I understand... This also will apply to APUs. Now, again, I'm very much hoping that this is untrue. However, I've heard this now from a couple of very good sources. And one of those sources told me the cancellation of N41 and 42. Actually, no, two of them told me the same thing. Um, so, again, I'm hoping this is untrue, but I've heard it now from multiple people. And interestingly, I actually wrote to a couple of people and said, hey, have you heard this? And they said, oh, you've heard about this as well, which is never a good sign, because if more than just the initial people telling you this, it's usually becoming quite common. Now, it's possible that AMD may choose to not go through with this, but I'll tell you the ramifications more in a moment, but the reason behind this, basically, um, as you probably know, drivers are not easy. Because it's not just like, oh, we're fixing this bug, you've probably seen things like the ratchet and clank ray tracing thing and you can blame the developers or whatever it's up to you i don't even want to go down that rabbit hole but what i can tell you is features take a long time like where's any news of fsr3 hyper x like i i don't see it <laughs> and i've been told fsr3 is still in development it's not canned it's just delayed now how performant fsr3 is because fsr2 is really good so obviously AMD just doesn't want to release this thing and then it's just like, you know, a crappy mess because that's just not a good look. Like we saw how long NVIDIA took for um, perception of DLSS to change when DLSS 2 came out. No, it's still a piece of crap. That's just the public perception because DLSS 1, especially with the early versions of DLSS 1, they just were not good. You know, they were okay on some games actually. I'll take that back. Some games at some resolutions, it looked okay. But a lower resolutions, especially on certain... I think it's Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I can't remember if Shadow of the Tomb Raider was one of the good-looking ones or one of the crappy-looking ones. I don't remember. But, yeah, uh, it just wasn't that good. But now, like, DLSS is really good with version 2 and version 3. Eh, it's going to get better with the frame generation. And again, AMD wants to make sure that this is something that gets better with FSR 3, as it is a lofty promise. So... You've got the feature set they need to work on. They need to, of course, concern themselves about future updates to drivers. And yeah, it's just a lot of work. And AMD's driver team is not as big as, let's say, NVIDIA. So, you know, in that respect, something has to give. And in this case, if this is true, and again, I'm hoping it is not, and I'm hoping I take the L, um, it means the RX4 AC5, uh, well, sorry, 400 series, 500 series, so anything Polaris based, as well as Vega. So, for example, Vega 56, 64, I'm assuming Radeon 7s, although I wasn't told that specifically, but it's based upon Vega, so, you know. And I, as I just mentioned, APUs. And I'm sure some of you are going to say, but, um, dude, <laughs> doesn't Cezanne have, you know, uh, 
you know, part of the refresh and all, the vague, so what hell's happening with that? And I would say, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to make specific cases for specific architectures. I hope so. Um, and I, you know, on one hand, I say to myself, well, how long can you support an architecture for, right? Um, like, again, once a graphics card has been sold, let's say for the sake of argument that you were one of those people who bought an RX 480 at launch, and you can make, you know, a pretty good case that that card is still decent. If you're willing to turn down the settings, you're willing to play around the resolution, it plays a lot of games decently. However, you know, for AMD's, from AMD's perspective, excuse me, it also no longer is generating profits. Um, so, yeah, I will be very interested to see if that comes to, the, uh, comes to uh, be true. Um, again, I'm hoping it isn't true. Um, because at the moment it is not a publicly released driver update and they have not formally announced it. However, it is, the best way I can say is it's being internally discussed. Um, so, we'll see. Um, this is not the most positive AMD news video that I've come up with ever. I think overall the company is not going to go bankrupt. It's not screwed. It's going to have a long-term, you know, future decent, you know, prosperity. There are some excellent products coming out from the company, um, not least of which Zen 5 is absolutely shaping up to be ridiculous. Um, I think it's going to be very good. Oh, actually, a small update for Zen 5. This is a good piece of news. Um, you may recall I just recently said that the uh, basically the I.O. Uh, memory system and stuff like that is essentially going to be the same as the previous generation for Ryzen I'm referring to here. Um, and I basically said, well, if it's not going to support faster memory speeds, does that mean that Zen 5 is going to be memory ba uh, ban band Wow, I can't speak. Memory bandwidth bound. And the answer is probably not from what I'm hearing from one of my sources. Obviously, this is still really early. This is not final production silicon. However, their internal estimates apparently are putting it very much on the same, you know, same kind of... Uh, trajectory as the previous generation so theoretically as long as you've got decent speed memory you should be okay and the gap the gulf between the x3d and the vanilla part should be about the same as what we have with zen 4 so hopefully that is the case again zen 5 is shaping up to be absolutely phenomenal i think it's going to be a very good architecture and amd also have some other really good news of course coming up for example, um, not least of which things like Sarlacc. With that said, um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't, yeah, this is kind of a, a bit of a disappointing one. I still think, however, that, and this is a little bit of copium, so, you know, I, I'm going to be huffing some right now, if you don't mind. I don't necessarily mind RDNA 4 only being low to mid-range if... It is A, a good price, B, available in good quantities and high volume, C, it has no bugs or, you know, problems, and D, it is performant enough in those product tiers. Because, honestly, it would still cater for a large number of people. And I am okay with that. It sucks balls, if this is true, that NVIDIA are going to have no competition, really, for the 580 or 5, uh, 590. Um, because Battle Mage is going to be roughly on par, the high-end tiers, with the um, with the 480. But, um, you know what? If NVIDIA has competition and low range, low to mid range, and of course we have also APUs adding pressure to the market, it could be worse, I guess. Let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. I'll take... Let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.